I'm Fergus Crawley. I'm currently training for a 250 km ultramarathon from Edinburgh to Ben Nevis in one go. And this is what I eat in a big training day. Hello, good morning and welcome to another video and my first full day of eating at round training in quite a while. Why that is, I'm not quite sure, but here we are up in Glencoe in the Scottish Highlands to get through two big old training days ahead of my 250 kilometer ultramarathon in one go that comes through here at the end of March. So we're just under six weeks out as this is being filmed, about five and a half in fact, and big day today, 30K on my feet with about 800 meters of elevation and the same again tomorrow, more or less wrecking the route. We've got the whole team here, Everybody's slamming their breakfast now and we're going to be out in the rain because it's horrible today just getting a feel for one the pacing the terrain the strategy how we're going to film it who needs to be where at what time what we need to have with us etc etc just figuring things out so logistically we can get ahead but that's probably not what you're interested in as this is a full day of eating so i have already had Weetabix, banana raspberry and a pint of milk i've had a coffee and I now have an expertly cooked by Jamie slice of white toast, lawn sausage because we're in Scotland, about one and a half eggs and two rather crispy slices of bacon. So I'm going to get to this now. Calories and macros are on the screen for you just now. Bit of context as to how I approach nutrition in general terms. What I'll do when I'm training for big volume events is have a baseline daily intake that means that that's what I eat in line with my goals. Currently it's maintenance, so maintenance calories for me is about 3,000 calories. That's accounting for daily step count and weight training. And then on big training endurance days like today, I will eat back 90% of whatever my devices tell me I have burned. Not an exact science, but essentially working within a ballpark figure. And I'll eat back 90% of what I've burned on top of that 3,000 calories. So today I'll probably end up being around the 5,000 calorie mark. So there's gonna be a lot of this, there's gonna be a lot of this, and I might even just take this, if you don't mind, Scott. If you want more context and a much more detailed approach to exactly how I approach nutrition, how you can too, look for this video on the screen. But I'm gonna get into this, grab a knife and fork now, consume this food, probably have another coffee, and then we're gonna get in the car to head about an hour south to Inverarnon to then start running back up this direction to the Bridge of Orkey, and then we'll drive home and I'll show you what I'm eating along the way. Thank you very much. All right, we are ready to go. In terms of what I've got on my person, in here I have all my electrolytes and carbs. Actually, a bit of a secret project that my protein and I are working on. So in there is 80 grams of carbs and 600 milligrams of electrolytes in one and a half liters of water. So that is there. And I have a whole variety of snacks and things in here. I've got squares bars, the usual. No squashies this time though. If you're a long time viewer of the channel, you'll be aware that I've ruined them for myself with the double brutal prep. Got some little oat bars and things, but generally speaking, a lot of my nutrition will be coming from this. I'm just topping up on little bits like this as we go. I can keep stuff in and out of the car as we, as we crack on too, but I'll let you know what I'm consuming as we go. But I will put an account for the macros from this on the screen for you just now, adding to the total that is on the screen just now but as always essentially there's three components to consider when you're fueling endurance sports fluids carbohydrates and sodium and essentially i've always been really keen on tripling down on that as my main supply and staple of those three things so in here i have water carbohydrates and sodium and then i will be topping that up with other things as i go but using this as my foundation means that i can really keep on top of all of those three things without really needing to think about it much as i go obviously as time goes on five, six, seven hours deep, you're gonna to wanna to be consuming more things that you enjoy more, a little bit more morale boosting. You don't wanna be relying on performance foods all the time. But today, tomorrow, is gonna to be getting a feel for the terrain and the pace that I'm moving at and how I can consume things, how often I can access the car, how much I need to carry on my person. And it's in some truly, truly Scottish weather. So if it ain't raining, it ain't training.
we are in Inveranen, about to head 30 kilometers that way to the Bridge of Orkey. Jamie's gonna be joining me for the first 15, 20K, give or take, he might end up doing the whole thing, but I've got everything mapped out here. Power save, let's avoid that to keep my GPS on. Food, drink, all of my person. I've kind of got everything I need with me, so I'll talk you through it as we go on. This bad boy, GoPro right here because the weather is not exactly conducive to using the camera that we're currently filming on as much as we would have otherwise liked to. It's four degrees Celsius, it's raining pretty consistently. That is not gonna stop. So all that's really left to do now is to get moving. So. Goodbye. So those three components of fueling for endurance that I ran through earlier, it's important to try and set yourself a bit of a structure or a regimen protocol, if you will, to stick to. So I have a little buzzer on my watch that goes every 15 minutes. I do this for triathlon, ultra stuff, whatever it may be, where I just open this up. I'll have three decent sips and then put it away. And then that means that I'm just keeping on top of a rhythm so that if I do start to get pallet fatigue, if I do start to get a bit sick of something, if I do fall a bit behind, then it means that I've got some sort of structures to hold myself accountable to. And as I've said, I've got sodium, water, and carbohydrates in there. So if I just keep topping things up, that means that when I get the food in, I'll be able to not necessarily consume as much all at once, which means digestion over time can be a little bit more manageable. And that's ultimately part and parcel of why days like today, days like tomorrow are so important for events like this because you're sort of going through the motions in an event setting and trialing things in training so that you can make your mistakes here so that when it comes to event day, you've got your strategy, you know what you need to do, and it's just about execution. So I'll check in with you shortly for my first bit of something sweet. Can you see the trail there, look? Yeah. The hill book have all those trees on his right. There's no way in for the car here. We'd have to get down across the river and up past the, the farm there. So we'll have to mark that in as a no support area. And then feed him again up here. Okay, half an hour has elapsed, so first bit of food on board, trying to get something in every 30 minutes, alongside fluids every 15. So, squares bar, calories macros on the screen for you just here. And what's interesting at the moment is one, my feet are completely soaked through, which is kind of freeing in a way, because it's been the first section of many runs like this, trying to keep your feet dry. And then when they're soaked through, you suddenly don't need to worry about keeping them dry, which means you can basically just throw your foot out in front of you and hope for the best. So we're in a bit of a flat rolling section now where I nearly rolled into the floor. Good Lord, that would have been entertaining. And the challenge at the moment is that's in heat because we're in proper waterproofs today because of the temperature to try and keep ourselves somewhat dry. If we're moving too quickly, temperature does get a little bit uncomfortable and a bit unsustainable. So we're just making sure that we're keeping a pace that's manageable. So enough for me, I'm gonna get this on board and keep moving. No way of keeping these feet dry, that's for sure. Good training for come whatever may be at the end of March, I guess is the way that I'm framing things today. Cheers, Quaker, Flapjack, 224 calories. Details on the screen, totals on the screen. We're about an hour and a half deep, feeling solid. Lots of undulations, big inclines at the moment, so keep moving. About to drop down into Tindrum, which is sort of the last bit of civilization before you enter Glencoe, and it just becomes long, beautiful, barren area. So very good to get to grips with the area, so I know what to expect. I uh, just slipped and hit the deck though, so that's that's good fun. Shame that wasn't on video, I would have loved to share that with you all because Jamie was cackling, but nonetheless, nothing snapped, nothing hurt. Just a reminder that I think I need to upgrade my trail shoes to ones with a little bit more aggressive lugs on them. As I've been saying, make the mistakes in training so that everything is easy breezy, aside from the fact that 250 kilometers is a very long way, come event day. I, 
I tripped and fell. Yeah, you and <laughs> very easily could have broken my collarbone if he wasn't just there. Just So total ascent so far, 516. So we've done most of the elevation for the day so far. Very undulating. So it's kind of frustrating, mainly because my brain is really focusing on like logistics of the actual event, which we're all just discussing. Not many opportunities to get the car in and out. So the camera guys for the main thing are gonna have a real, real challenging day. What's that, 15K bang on, hour 57, moving pretty much exactly as we expected pace-wise. No real spike in demand in my legs. Heart rate's never really got up. Breath's always been under control. Heat, I'm a little bit chilly right now, but I'm not moving, so that makes yeah, sense. And one of the key things for the day itself, I think, is going to be forward motion, which is why I'm eating more dense foods like I am today on the move, so that I can just keep moving forwards because ultra endurance stoppage time can absolutely murder you. So if you can keep moving forwards, keep topping up as you go, your stomach can hack it, build a stomach of iron, and you'll be good to keep moving in the right direction. Hopefully. We've only gone off course once, but don't tell anyone. Weather has taken a turn. We had a glimpse of blue sky for a second there after rendezvousing with the team, but alas, misty, sideways, windy rain. Bread and butter for Scotland. Cheers. All right, gel going in, mainly just because Jamie's been stealing all my squares, bars, and flatjacks. No. That's not what I want right now. You should have brought your own food, you prick. I've got it. I'm just taking it. Everybody comment, Jamie, you're a snake brackets but thank you for supporting Fergus on this training run in the comments down below and if this video gets 1500 likes to celebrate hitting 100,000 subscribers I'll run 100k around the track so drop a comment like it share it with your friends and if you want to watch me suffer for one of my last training runs before the 250 then you know what to do calories and macros for this on the screen here totals on the screen there adios amigos well you won't remain my amigos if you give this video 1500 likes but for the time being amigos it is absolutely wild how quickly the weather can change. I cannot believe that we've gone from really quite brutal wind and rain 10, 15 minutes ago to ostensibly a lovely day. The big section where you come out after Bridge of Orkney. That's where you're hugging the mouse That's a fucking pain in the arse of the car. You can get all the way in. That's the last point we can get you in yeah. there. We'll get you in there and then that's where we put probably me in with you. Yeah. And we run the dark together. Like the heavy hard dark. That's yeah. Maybe getting dark again then. That's where you're going to be at most risk. Uh, and, yeah, well, and at the least, the least opportunity to support. My main point is focus. I mean, already now, I've just been a little bit fatigued from quite a big training week already. I'm finding myself just tripping a little bit. And when I'm 30 that's, hours that's deep... That's why having like, somewhere for the support team, bring him out for a little bit. Have him I just thought I'd acknowledge how hilarious it is that Jamie and I in the exact same jacket, black shoes, dark waterproof trousers, and have hats on backwards. Same pack as well, same pack, but that is mine, as is all the food that you've been eating this whole time. So, just thought I'd acknowledge that before anyone else has commented. Well, are you guys brothers or something? <laughs> yes. It does feel quite interesting doing this with only 10k or so to go. Yeah, is that right? 9k? Thank you very much. Cheers. Um, but ultimately, this is the exact attitude and approach that we need to take when it comes to the event itself. So, you know, learn to be able to eat solid food on the go. Best guess on calories and macros. Someone that's going to be now. That's delightful. Hot food, out of the cold, feeling suitably fueled. With this savage next to me. Ultra endurance training is ultimately an eating competition with movement involved. Simple as that really. Whenever you're ready mate. Alright, had a toasty, not feeling very toasty because of the temperature. Uh -huh. Okay, should probably just leave ungracefully now. Hold the line fast.
had to work quite hard there to get some temperature built back up but mission accomplished here my breath a little bit for the first time actually just working a bit harder but job done now walking up this gradient here weather is rank but that is what we're here for so just glad it's still positive digits temperature wise otherwise i'd be in probably less positive spirits overall we'll keep on moving still sipping my fluids as we go i just can't be asked to vomit every time aiming for about 60 to 75 grams carbs per hour as a rule with my endurance distance training and that's not necessarily something to generalize for everybody but it's definitely a good starting point to work from so if you find yourself going over the 90 minute mark two hour mark you should definitely be taking some carbohydrates on whilst you're doing endurance work and sodium is a huge consideration as well and it's up to you to play around with how much water fluid is involved heat's a huge thing as well obviously if you're doing this in Lanzarote versus where we are right now if you're on the bike versus on your feet there's a lot of considerations so yeah I like to think the occasional castle that I run past in Scotland in these videos is a bit of a novelty for anyone not from around these parts but here's another one we have ourselves some Highland cows. <laughs> Average face, Jamie. For the whole thing. This is remarkable. Guess the average pace for the whole thing? Well, I've just looked. But, well, yours might be slightly different. 7.1. I've got 7.30 on the nose. The pacing aim for today was 7.30 as an average. I have an average of 7.30. So that was accidentally perfect. Anyway, data on the screen for you just here. I did have one gel up there that I didn't record because I was vibing hard. That was a big, big section that we could just open up and really run. We had a few Ks at like 5.34, 5.45. So really enjoy just getting into a zone and going there. Anyway, that is that. How do you feel? Yeah, good. All things considered. I think it was the pie that did it. <laughs> He's a man of many words. Anyway, I think we should get in the car and back to the house. In the car, being driven by Mr. Payne, I have myself a my protein white chocolate brownie, which I'll have a average of one to two every single day because I love them and I've been craving this for the past couple of hours as I wait to finish. Calories, macros on the screen somewhere. Totals also there. Good to have things like this when I'm up north because infrastructure up here is next to nothing, which means protein can be a little bit hard to come by. So having some convenient protein is a huge, huge win. That means that by planning ahead, you don't find yourself in a pickle where you're living on white bread, butter and jam for your dinner. We've got, have we got oven pizzas for tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So protein will be reasonable in those, but not enormous. So I've got some clear way at the house as well, which I'll get into later on. Refreshing, hopefully we've got some ice in the freezer. Can't imagine that I've provided that, but either way, having stuff like this, having clear way on the road, whenever I'm traveling, whenever I'm going anywhere, even in the office, convenient, easily accessible protein is a huge component of being able to basically train as a hybrid athlete, whereby you're going to be consuming a lot of calories to hold on to muscle mass and body weight alongside endurance work. So with protein being one of the main foundations of that, if you set yourself up for failure by not having access to it, then you're making an already difficult task more difficult. So having things like this is essential. If you want to have some things like this available to you, then use the code Fergus at checkout at MyProteins website to save yourself some percentage off, and you'll be helping out the channel in doing so. Link is in the description. See you at the house. Okay, call complete. That was with our wind spring intake at Omni Performance. We're essentially all training towards a 12 hour max distance time on feet at the end of March when I'm gonna be running my 250K. So suffering in solidarity, you will be able to get involved for winter in 2024. So if you're looking to be in the know and even if you want 15 resilience hacks delivered directly to your inbox, then sign up to the newsletter down below and you can be kept in the loop. So yeah. 
essentially we'll be covering three options for people to approach the 12 hours with a backyard ultra style, out and back style, or a sort of bigger loop or point to point option. And that's that. So I'm gonna have this in here, which is some rice, cheddar, black bean chili, and then I've got some chicken. I'll probably have one of these and I'll probably have some of this as well. So I'm gonna get some food on board and I will see you very soon. Okay, six minutes past eight and I have two servings of rice, cheddar and the black bean chili con carne thing with a very sad looking wedge of lime that Erin very kindly gave me here. I'll get to that shortly. And a, just a, I think 1.2 chicken breast, give or take. I do know exactly what's in this. It's on a sheet of paper at home and the information is on here. And the totals for the day thus far are here. So 31K on my feet, 800 meters of elevation and some food to eat back. So as I mentioned before, what I tend to do on big training days like this is I will eat back 90% of the calories burnt according to Strava on top of my daily maintenance, which at the moment is 3000 calories. So, I have burnt 2,938 calories, which is 2,644. So plus 3,000, I have 5,644 calories to eat for the day, which is quite a lot. But ultimately that's what is required if you're gonna be doing big volume whilst also trying to maintain muscle mass, body mass, body weight, etc., etc. And I fluctuate on a daily basis like that so that I'm effectively fueling big training days, but also I get very, very hungry on big training days. So I'd rather eat on big training days and eat a little bit less on days where I'm just doing a weightlifting session or a rest day, for example. Again, refer you to a previous video on the case. I'm gonna get into this and then probably need to get some pizza down me as well to be able to have enough calories for the day. So, I don't know what this is like cold. It doesn't look very appetizing. And that cheese is kind of sitting like a little platform. I'll do. I'll do. All right, that's boxed off, and I am feeling quite full, I must admit. But in front of me, I have one, two, three, four, five pieces of pizza. That these vultures kindly left for me. I also have one over there We've before, before January. Well. Do you? Not really. No. Not really, no. So, five pieces of pizza plus one that I had earlier, calories and macros on the screen here, totals on the screen for you here. This is a little bit... Does somebody nail all the cheese off that, or is that where I was deceiving me? <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, getting close to the amount of calories required for the day. I might end up calling it a little bit short, just so I'm not force feeding myself before bed, because it's much later than I had originally anticipated it would be. I'm gonna eat this, and then I think we'll close off the video. How's that sound? Okay, positive training day overall, finishing the day about 5,250 calories, I believe, totals on the screen for you just here. Obviously, overshot protein and fat intake a little bit, and carbs are pretty sky high as well, but that is just the nature of the game when trying to sort of bump up my calories around bigger training volume. I wanna maintain my strength, I wanna maintain the muscle mass, I've worked for over 13 years to build and try and hold on to. So if you are training as a hybrid athlete, it is very important to not accidentally put yourself into a deficit through bumping up your endurance volume and therefore having more calories to essentially balance the books with. Final reminder, done a video on this in the past if you want to go and check that out in more detail as that is the best place to contextualize a lot more what I've been saying today and sort of skimming over a little bit. All in all, 30K on my feet today, 31K on my feet today in fact, about 28 tomorrow. Positive recce, team as a whole are feeling pretty confident. It's actually quite late on, 10.23, 300 calories or so behind where I said I'd be, but I'm full, it's way past my bedtime. I would like to go to sleep and rest my weary legs ahead of tomorrow, but yeah, I'm not gonna lose any sleep, hopefully, over 300 calories or so behind. That will do the job. But logistics, practicality, confidence, and planning all in a really good place ahead of the next five and a half weeks ahead of game day. So, exciting times. Let's see what the rest of my prep looks like for a 250 kilometer ultra marathon. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you see what that looks like. Drop the video a like, there is a big fat incentive for you to do so, as you should already be aware from earlier in the video, and do comment with your thoughts, feelings, questions, below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.